germs. Welcome back. You guys are always welcome here. Um, but I appreciate you coming back and uh, sticking with this uh, this series. Uh, today's episode is going to be a little bit technical, and unfortunately, it's going to be me just kind of doing a lot of talking. Um, but but it's kind of necessary because of uh, what we're doing. So uh, let me first just start off with with the bike here in question. Uh, so this frame. <clears throat> It's a handmade frame, a steel frame. Um, it's beautifully made from what I can tell. It's got uh, beautiful uh, felt brazed uh, joints here. And um, it's a little bit older. Uh, I mean, I can't say for sure, but it seems like it's a little bit older in the fact that it was made with uh, cantilever bosses. And on top of that, you can see See, at some point the frame was updated to have disc brakes. You can tell by the gray paint here uh, where they had to grind off the paint and put on a uh, cable guide and then of course uh, a disc tab. And uh, I've done many, uh, many of those disc tab jobs. Uh, for a while there that was all I was doing because people are in such a rush to uh, have their bikes converted to disc brakes. So. <laughs> Um, for a while there, and yeah, I did, I did tons of those jobs. So, um, my guess is this is that this frame is, a, you know, it's got a few years on it. Uh, you know, better part of 20 years, probably. So, um, in any case, the, the crack, which we're going to have to address here, is, uh, is, a, is a problem because it's something that you, again, you can see this on you know, a lot of bikes and a lot of different types of bikes have cracks like this. Titanium bikes, aluminum bikes, steel bikes, you know, they all can suffer from this. And, you know, uh, some bikes, it's just over, you know, the course of many years, uh, fatigue can set in and this can happen. Uh, other times it's because there is a disparity between the inside diameter of the seat tube and the seat post. And I believe that's what's happened here. If the diameter, inside diameter of the seat tube is not uh, correct when you install the seat post, there'll be a, just a tiny bit of w wiggle room. And even if you can't feel the wiggle room, which in most cases you can't, uh, it's gonna cause trouble. So. I, I tried measuring this uh, inside diameter, but it's it's nearly impossible because of the, the crack, you know, everything flexes and moves around and it's just difficult to, to get an accurate, uh, you know, number on, on what this is. But from looking at the seat post, uh, the customer here uses a Thompson, which is you know, my favorite uh, seat post, and it is a 27.2. And it does fit, you know, reasonably snug in uh, the seat tube, but I believe that the opening uh, and the inside diameter of this tube is a little bit too large. The reason I say that is uh, you can kind of feel it with your finger more than see it, but you can kind of feel a, a lump. And if you have a bike, a steel bike, um, it's important to actually check this from time to time you know take your finger and uh find where the the slot is and then just below the slot move your finger up and if you feel a bump uh under right underneath the slot uh you'll know that that column is having trouble and that there's some column failure happening there the the bump is always the first sign that something's not right and uh, you, 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 you can see this on, you know, even high-end, really high-end bikes. You know, you'll notice a little bump. And then usually what happens, and there's no real timeline on this, but usually what happens is from that bump, you start to get a small crack, is what's happened here, and then that crack starts to grow, and then over time that crack just gets huge. And uh, that's it's a big problem. Uh, eventually it will just fail, it will break, uh, the crack will grow so, so much. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, it's Im important to check this, this intersection from time to time. And I do that on, you know, my bikes. Uh, 
even this Richie here. Um, yeah, it's it's feels feels good. So this is the correct size. Um, but you know, other bikes. Here's a titanium one. You can see, no problem here. Uh, so anyway. Something to check if you have a steel or titanium or even aluminum bike. This is just a common place for, for them to fail. So back, back to the disparity between the diameters here. So when frames are made, uh, builders will take, I'll show you. Take one of these, this is a reamer. And you send the reamer down into the seat tube and this reamer will cut a nice, perfect round shape into uh, the seat tube. The reason this is important is that when you braze the frame or weld the frame, uh, it will distort the seat tube. You know, these are really thin walls and there's a lot of heat and, and pressure put on the seat tube and so it will not be round anymore. So you just send the, the trusty um, reamer down into the seat tube and it will cut a nice round shape back into the seat tube and you have to be careful when you cut uh, because you don't want to uh, again make this opening larger than 27.2 millimeters uh, so and it's easy to do it's easy to cut out just a little bit more and we're talking about thousandths of an inch or you know, just a fractions of, of a millimeter. And so you really can't see it from the naked eye. You have to take a caliper and you actually have to measure and you know, see how this goes. The, the other thing, um, for those of you who built frames will know this, um, uh, just the act of reaming the seat tube will cause all sorts of heat into the tube. In fact, uh, it'll, they'll be hot to the touch. <laughs> when you do this. And so if you are reaming the frame and you know it's hot and then you go to measure, that measurement will not be correct. You actually have to wait for the the, the frame to kind of cool off and then you can check the measurement and um, and then test it. Basically what I do is when I make frames I, I have a seat post you know handy and I just check it and then if it's not right I'll expand the reamer this reamer is adjustable. I'll expand the, the blades on, on the reamer just a little bit and try again. And then you'll basically repeat this process until the uh, seat post fits perfectly. So um, let's, you know, it, so if you get this perfectly on 27.2, it should be no problem. The so again, it's easy to cut too much. I'm not being critical on the builder here because uh, I probably have frames out there that are reamed slightly more than 27.2 or whatever the, the size I'm going for is. Uh, but to, to make matters worse, and this is something that people don't think about, <clears throat> and that is, I'll get the caliper here. If you wake up caliper, all right, zero it out. Uh, so this, this seat post here has printed on it 27.2 millimeters. So if you take a caliper and you look at it, it's right here. It says 27.2. It's hard to do this with one hand. There we go. If you look at this, I'm trying to trying to hold this steady. It's hard to do this with one hand. You can see I've gotten it down to 27.15, 27.17. Uh, so you can see that this seat post is actually under 27.2, even though it's printed 27.2 right on the seat post. And this is actually very common. Most seat posts, if you measure them, will be under 27.2. And the manufacturers do that on purpose because if this is 27.2, and you have a seat post that's 27.2, in theory, they they really shouldn't fit. Or, or if they do fit, the, it'll be too tight. It'll be an interference fit. And so something has to give here. We, we, you know, we either need this to be slightly over 27.2 or the seat post slightly under 27.2 to, 
to have fit properly. And so most seat post manufacturers, if you take a caliper to them, will be slightly under 27.2 because they know that it has to, that they're, they're relying on the fact that the frame is going to have a perfect 27.2 uh, inside diameter. And this way they know their, their seat posts will fit perfectly into the frame. So uh, that's kind of, you know, uh, so if you take into account that this is slightly smaller and then 27.2 and that the frame has been probably reamed slightly over 27.2, well, you, you get a, the disparity grows and, you know, years down the road, it can cause problem. And probably this frame has gone many, many miles and it's been, you know, an awesome bike. Uh, this, this customer really loves this thing. And so he obviously wants to save it. Uh, a lot of people just throw this frame away. Thank heavens this guy wants to save the bike. Um, but... You know, small discrepancies between the post and the and the seat tube, you know, years down the road can turn into this. So it is our job to, uh, or my job, I guess, to to fix this. And so we're gonna have to machine a um, uh, a fixture to hold the seat tube in place so that we can weld things back. And then I think we're also gonna fabricate a collar. So I'm just trying to make sure I have material. So I've got some steel and some aluminum. We'll make a fixture and then we'll uh, use this steel here uh, for a collar. And uh, so we'll start this process here and this will hopefully be so, uh, yeah, interesting. There's a lot of ways to kind of solve this problem, but uh, you know, I think um, when you try to fix problems like this on bicycles, you want to fix it in a way that is going to remedy the, the issue so that it doesn't happen again. So stick with me here, and uh, the next episode will be much better, I promise. Uh, a lot less talking. So um, if you like this kind of crap, give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe. I appreciate all six of you who uh, follow me and um, bear with me here with all, all of this bull crap. So we'll see you next time. Bear, come here, buddy. Sit. Can you wave goodbye to everybody? Can you wave? Can you wave? Thank you for waving goodbye. Good boy.